Today we're over by this marina called Pelican Harbor Marina over by North Bay Village, Florida. And it's honestly one of the crappiest looking marinas I've ever seen. But we're gonna walk over here anyways because at least it's by the water and uh, maybe we'll get some cool views out of this. One thing that I've been covering from time to time is the affordable housing crisis as it pertains to mobile home parks and mobile home owners because basically mobile homes are the last most affordable housing option throughout the entire country guys that's indisputable okay for the longest time people have been paying between three to five hundred dollars a month for lot rent for any given mobile park and then you either rent the mobile home itself or a lot of the people who live in these parks actually own the mobile homes outright because they're very difficult to get financing for. And in the past, you could buy one for like 70, 80K and have no mortgage and all you have to pay is your utilities and your lot rent. But this whole notion of having an affordable place to live with a mobile home is quickly fading into the past. In fact, there was a brand new story today out of New Mexico about a mobile home park there where people are just outright getting eviction notices for basically no reason. So let's take a look at this story and what's happening over there. So the name of this place is called Dale Mobile Village and it's in New Mexico. And the previous owner of this place, Jack Dale, he has owned this place for many decades up until recently and sold the property to one of the residents there whose name is Erasmo Dozal. Okay, that's a hard name to say, so I'm not going to try to say that too many times. Let's just call him the new owner from now on. First of all, the residents that live there said that they were not given any type of notice that there was going to be a sale of the property. But once the sale of this property went through back in January, the new owner said that he would be raising the rents on everybody and the current rent for the lots there was $380 a month and he was going to be raising the new rent to $700 a month. That's a 184% increase for those who are counting. But in the state of New Mexico, just saying you're going to raise the rent is not considered a legal notice. And so therefore, there needed to be some sort of formal notice for this. So in response to this, the new owner said that the rent increases would be delayed until April and that he was gonna be sending out letters to the tenants, giving them two months to think about what they wanna do. And the new owner is claiming that he needs to raise the rents to this amount in order to pay the mortgage, because otherwise he won't even be able to afford to keep this place going. And he's claiming that he needs to get, at minimum, $700 per month from each lot just to pay the mortgage. So the new owner is basically using his poor investment as an excuse to raise the rent for all of the mobile homeowners there because what's happening is the guy bought the place and you know assuming that he'd be able to get the $700 a month right that was his assumption which obviously might not be working out too well for him right now because he's looking at evicting all of the tenants there who can't pay and so the tenants there are saying that this increase is unaffordable and they're barely making it as the, as it is and it's going to be pretty much impossible for them to go ahead and pay this increase that the new owner wants. So on February 1st of 2023, the tenants got eviction notices saying that they have 30 days to move out. So apparently he just changed his mind like, you know what, you guys are being too difficult. You don't wanna pay the increases. You just have to leave. So the tenants there contacted an attorney and the attorney said that this notice that the new landlord gave to these tenants is not legal and they can still stay in their homes until further notice. And the reason why the landlord wants to evict this couple is because they don't want to pay the insurance that the landlord is requiring to have because the landlord wants these tenants to pay for a tenant insurance policy. And since these people are refusing to do that, then the owner says, you know what, then you guys can just leave and uh, we're kicking you out basically. And so far, just this one couple are the only people that have gotten eviction notices in the park, but Judging by the way that the landlord is proceeding with them, I'm sure if the other tenants in the park don't comply with the rent increases or whatever he wants them to do, 
with insurance requirements, then many of the other residents will probably be next when it comes to getting eviction notices. But in New Mexico, they have something called the Mobile Home Park Act that limits the ways that landlords can end tenancy in these parks because typically the people that live in these mobile home parks rent the land, but they own the mobile home. Basically what this law does, it restricts the landlords to following very strict compliance notice requirements and to give detailed reasons on why tenancy would be terminated for any given tenant. And so since this 30 day notice of eviction that this couple got there does not comply with this law, then their attorney is saying this is not valid because it was a 30 day notice and it didn't give any specific reasons of why they needed to leave. It's just that you have 30 days to go that's it and here's the deal guys this couple that's that got this eviction notice they've been living at this mobile home park for 45 years and they said that originally they were just planning on staying for a few years until they could save up to buy something of their own but what happened was everything just got so expensive and they could never really afford to buy a different type of home and fast forward 45 years later they're still there and they said in the 45 years that they've been living there they've never been faced with an issue like this where they were facing potential eviction with the previous owner so imagine they lived in this area all this time no problems whatsoever and wham new owner you got an eviction notice for not complying with what the new owner wants and here's the thing guys this is probably going to be the theme for many different mobile home parks across the country. We already covered in the last video about this, about how many big hedge fund investors are coming in, buying up entire mobile home parks and then just evicting everybody. And this is a very similar story, but just on a much smaller scale. Like I said, it's not the prettiest looking marina over here, but hey, this is what we got today. It's always good to check out different things and see what else is around the area, you know? Not everything has to be the lap of luxury, you know what I mean? But I think if you live in a mobile home park right now, then you should definitely be concerned because basically if you don't own the land that your home is parked on, it's almost a guarantee that you're going to be next at some point in the future because a lot of these mobile home parks were started many years ago just like this one you know 45 years ago and uh you know now that the original owners that actually have integrity and cared about people are starting to retire or die off then and new people are inheriting these parks it's game over guys everything today is a land grab it's all about the cash it's all about how much money can we make off of you rather than let's make sure everyone can afford this place while I can still make a good living, you know? And, you know, this guy that bought this mobile home park obviously made a, a bad investment decision. And what he's trying to do is make it all the tenants problem that he made a bad investment decision. This would be the same thing as, say, buying a fourplex apartment building and doubling or tripling the rents because that's what you need in order to pay your mortgage. Well, the previous owner didn't need that much to pay their mortgage. Why? Because they didn't pay exorbitantly ridiculous prices for it, and therefore, they don't need to charge an arm and a leg to pay for their mortgage, okay? But that's the problem. All these new owners are strapped with, you know, these insane mortgage payments, and they think that they can just come into all these different real estate models and just double or triple the rent and everyone's going to pay and they're going to get rich. And people like this new landlord are finding out the hard way that that's probably not going to be the case. And I would even go as far to say that this applies not just to people who live in mobile homes, but if you live in any sort of affordable housing, like a fourplex or you know a, a rental building that has very cheap rent that's not subsidized by the government, you know you're not getting Section 8 to stay there, then this could easily happen to you guys. So that's why I'm talking about this stuff to give people a heads up of what might be coming in the near future because if you have a good deal right now, there's a good chance that could be going away soon. They got a lot of these areas locked up so you can't just go in there, you know? But we can still look at it from the outside.
But you know, this leads me perfectly into my next story. And it's a story from Redfin talking about how housing affordability has basically hit a historic low, guys. And I am not surprised at all to read about this, especially after just covering what we did. Redfin has been keeping track of the amount of affordable homes in the country since 2013. And as of 2022, Literally the number of them got cut in half. And they keep track of the nation's 100 largest metro areas. And basically what's deemed affordable is if your mortgage payment is 30% or less of your entire monthly budget. So if you make $3,000 a month, your mortgage payment shouldn't be any more than $1,000 a month, basically to be deemed affordable. That's 33%, I know close enough and every time affordability comes up when we're talking about housing i think we can always point back to the same thing okay we see mortgage applications at a 28 year low right now but interest rates are not at historic highs that's one thing that people keep talking about that well interest rates used to be 16 17 18 percent that's great guys homes were a lot cheaper and people did not have these massive levels of expenses and debt that everyone has now. Because of this society that we live in and the amount of money that people spend on complete garbage every single month, people are broke, okay? And that's part of the reason why people can just not pay these new mortgage prices because their earnings are not keeping up with it, all right? They're not making the money. Even with the raises, it's still not keeping up with inflation, which is going back up. People have more expenses than ever before. People have $1,000 a month car payments, you know, paying for groceries, you know. Inflation on groceries just went up like 11.3% year over year, guys. That's the most recent inflation report. Shows that food here in the U.S. is 11.2 or 11.3% more expensive than it was just one year ago. So... That's why people can't afford things. And one of the things I see all the time in the comments section is talking about how I'm not seeing this in my market. You know, I live in the Midwest and homes are still flying off the market here. And just after a couple days of being listed, there's bidding wars. There are, you know, multiple offers. People are paying over asking price again. People are seeing this in the Northeast and the Midwest in particular. So I'm gonna jump to another section of the video here to explain to you guys why this is happening. So check this out. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use the brand new ReVenture app from ReVenture Consulting to take a look at the Midwest and the Northeast to determine and get to the bottom of why it's still affordable and why the housing markets in these areas are still hot and people are saying, well, I'm not seeing this happen in my market and you know, homes are still flying off the shelf here and all of these things that are still happening. And what does it all come down to, guys? It comes down to affordability, okay? So for example, we're gonna be looking at here the house payment percentage of median incomes here, okay? And the lower this number is, then the more affordable the housing markets are. So the more blue the counties are or the metro areas are here, then the more affordable it is and the more likely you're gonna continue to see this behavior until they start turning more red, like a place like Dallas, for example. So looking at Peoria, Illinois, the heart of the Midwest, I'm from Illinois, look at that. Mortgage payments there are only about 18% of the median household yearly income. So that is very low, guys. Even if you move over to a very competitive market right now, like Omaha, Nebraska, for example, it's still at 29%. And they say that the average affordability for a household is like roughly 30% the mortgage payment should be of your total yearly income. So if you're only paying 30% or less, then that's still a very affordable market. And even though Omaha has been on fire, we can see here by this map that it's still very affordable for locals, okay? And then you can move into places like even in Indiana, okay? Indianapolis, 28.16% percentage of median income there. And we have Wisconsin, okay? You go up to, let's say Milwaukee, that's another very affordable market. 
still less than 35% of the median income there. And you can see it's starting to heat up. It's starting to become red. Same thing with Madison is hovering near 40%. And that's when you're going to start seeing these areas get slower in terms of demand. Jeff, I'm thinking about you here. St. Louis, this is why homes are still flying off the market there, okay? Houses only cost 25% of the median income there, which is why it still makes it very easy for people to buy even at these rates, okay? And just to show you guys real quickly, this is why we have the housing markets in like the Western United States crashing right now, okay? You go to places like Phoenix, look at that, 42%. You got LA, 75%. It's a joke, okay? You go up to Salt Lake City, almost 44%. And you go to Boise, Idaho, we got 46% of the median income houses cost there. Same thing with Portland, you got 47% there. If we go to the Seattle area, it's 52% of the household income is going towards mortgages there. You go to San Francisco, down to the Bay Area, almost 70% okay of the income is going towards house payments there and this is not sustainable guys and when you contrast that with the Midwest you see a ton of blue in this area and the areas that are even getting a little bit hot like Des Moines and Omaha and Madison are still far below those numbers we just saw and then if we move over to the Northeast we see a lot of the same story over there you go into the heart of Pennsylvania look at these areas 15 percent guys 14%, 23% in the Pittsburgh area, still very affordable there, okay? Even if you go to very uh, upper class markets like over in Connecticut, 32% of the household income there going towards mortgage payments. New Haven, Connecticut, 37%, starting to get a little overheated there. And then we look at Albany, New York, 31%, okay? Buffalo, New York, 33%. So these areas are still within the realm of affordability here. And that's the point I'm trying to drive home to every time somebody says, well, listen, it's not happening where I live. You know, houses are still flying off the shelf. You know, within the first week, they're being listed. This is the reason why, right here, guys, it all comes down to affordability. All these areas in blue and even the light orange are still very affordable, okay? Even Washington, D.C., a very expensive market, 35% of household income going towards mortgage payments there. But eventually, as these markets continue to stay competitive, this percentage of home prices compared to median income is going to rise and it's going to start looking more like these markets like Charlotte. You know, these are places that were typically affordable in the past, but so many people are moving to the Carolinas, for example. So you got Charlotte moving up, Charleston moving up close to that 40% range. You know, you have Atlanta moving up into the close to the 35 to 40% range getting there. One quick note, since obviously I'm in Florida, okay, most of Florida is red, guys. So why is the Florida housing market not taking a complete nosedive so far? Well, I have covered this many times in my videos, and all these numbers here are completely skewed by all the sheer amount of outside demand that we have. I mean, look at this, guys. In Naples, Florida, 56% of the median income needs to go towards a house payment. Similarly, in Miami, 52%. Arguably, arguably two of the most expensive areas in all of Florida, but yet... Prices are higher than ever, and people are still buying like crazy. Why is that? It's because we have people from all over the world that buy real estate here in Florida, and these numbers are detached from reality. Florida's housing market, according to this map, should be crashing right now. But the only reason it's not is because it's being propped up by outside demand from people in other parts of the country that make a lot of money looking to move to Florida, as well as foreigners looking to park their money in Florida. And here's another report out of Bank of America this week talking about how more investment funds than ever are piling into cash and keeping it there. So they're taking cash out of things like the bond and the stock market and even real estate when you look at the amount of people looking to get out of Blackstone and the problems that they're having with their withdrawals. And 
Why are companies doing this? Why are these big hedge funds and big banks hanging on to so much cash, especially at a time when we have inflation that we haven't seen in 40 plus years, guys? Any guesses? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. The answer to me is that they know that the 50% off sale is coming real soon. And the more cash that you have, then the more assets you're gonna be able to pick up at a discount when everything starts going on sale. We're talking about real estate, we're talking about gold and silver, we're talking about businesses, we're talking about stocks. Everything that's worth something today is gonna be cheaper than it is right now when everything starts crashing down. If you don't think that this is happening, guys, just go look at this for yourself. Why else would they be saving all of this money if it wasn't for this big problem that we're facing right now in our economy? And they're saying this is the largest influx of cash into one of these funds in the tune of $126 billion since the COVID pandemic. And that was back in 2020. And obviously, the reason why this probably happened back then is because when people get scared and investors get scared, well, they're looking at ways to try to prevent having problems and having cash on hand to be able to pay for unexpected expenses or pick up deals when they come along is king right now. And that's why you're seeing all of these big investment firms start to pile up the cash and even private investors too, guys. I see people in the comments saying, hey, you know, I'm sitting on a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of cash just waiting until everything starts going on sale. And I think that's the smart thing to do right now. If you're sitting and waiting and watching, you're noticing how everything is starting to come down with real estate and with stocks. And being ready with money on the side right now is an invaluable position. And I think that's what everybody should be striving for right now, if it's possible. Because with all that, the Fed dropped another warning this week saying that most likely they're going to have to raise the interest rates higher than they expected. Originally, they were thinking about getting it up to about the 5.1% mark and leaving it there for a little while and seeing what happens. Well, now the new benchmark is more likely to be about 5.4%, so higher than what they thought. Turns out consumer spending is not slowing down as much as they want to see and the job market is still way too hot and this is just unacceptable for the Fed right now. Oh, by the way guys, one thing people ask me all the time when I'm standing by the water over here is if there's any alligators over here. This is all salt water. This is Biscayne Bay. You don't have alligators in salt water, although occasionally we do see a saltwater crocodile come up around here from time to time. So very rare it's probably something i'll never see being out here but it is something that's possible and uh, just letting you guys know that seeing an alligator in a spot like this is probably chances are slim to none it definitely could happen but it probably never will And all the Fed officials, not even just Jerome Powell, but Neil Kashkari, Christopher Waller, these guys are also saying that they need to continue with the rate hikes longer and higher than what was anticipated just a couple of months ago. So this is all boiling down to one thing, guys. At the end, this is going to push us into a deep recession, not a mild one, like people were saying. And you know, all this talk about the soft landing and that everything is going to be just fine, we're gonna be recover from this thing like never before, has all just been a lie, guys. It's been a lie to get people to continue to spend like everything is good and not worry about things because that was basically their only plan to begin with to keep the economy going. And once people start seeing through this and the interest rates get past the point where people really can't afford to buy any homes anymore or pay off their credit cards or whatever, it's game over. And that's where I think we're headed later this year. That's when they're gonna call the recession official and everything is gonna be more unaffordable than ever. But like I said before, it all has to get worse before it gets better. And to me, this is excellent news because it's gonna to lead to some really good deals on 
hard assets in the future, which we all desperately need. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you click the bell notification down below. YouTube will alert you every time I post a new video. And if you don't want to wait, check out my next one on the screen right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.